Welcome back to the channel, my friends, and welcome to 2022. As you can see, I moved to a new super secret section of my hacking lair that normal people call a house. We even have a nice view of the outside, but don't get confused. Hackers never go outside. They stay tucked away in their mom's basement, eating Cheetos and only run out to Walmart when they run out of black hoodies. But anyways, I'm getting off track with this video. Today, we're going to talk about five things in 2022 that you can use in your bug bounty hunt. Actually, we're just going to talk about one thing. Brute forcing. <laughs> but don't be sad and don't worry, my friends. Let's log into HackerOne and look at a few write-ups, go over a few program scopes, and what the heck does everybody say about brute forcing and how do we brute force a web portal login for credentials? Stay tuned to the first most epic video of 2022 that outbeats cat and bread. Nice camera action. All right, guys, let's log in to HackerOne and take a look at some write-ups and programs. So the first write-up we're going to look at is the login of Hoard or Not is vulnerable to brute forcing. This was disclosed a couple years ago with a high severity and a bounty of 500. And what this hunter did was he basically used Burp Intruder to attack the login by sending as many requests as possible. The next write-up is a weak rate limit could lead to account takeover due to weak password protection mechanisms. And this was awarded a bounty of $100. And the third write-up, the ability to brute force Mopub accounts passwords due to lack of rate limitation protection using IP rotation techniques. So what he did was he brute forced the login with a thousand requests and he said using curl we can run an attack against a list of passwords with a fixed username to start guessing passwords and he set his password list to about a thousand passwords. To bypass this protection he used a python script to rotate IP addresses. So let's see what some programs say about brute forcing and rate limit. The first one we're going to look at is Starbucks. You can see that it says do not brute force credentials or guest credentials to gain access to system. There are some exclusions. Starbucks reserves the right to add to and subtract from the exclusion list depending on the evaluated severity of the reported vulnerability and risk acceptance and enforcement policies for brute force or account lockout is one of them all right let's take a look at yahoo out of scope brute forcing account credentials sega the following issues are considered out of scope rate limiting or brute force issues on non-authentication endpoints and then let's take a look at reddit low risk vulnerabilities are typically vulnerabilities that allow a user to do something they shouldn't but with no serious security implications. Examples include password brute forcing that circumvents rate limiting. So Reddit is saying that they accept it as a low vulnerability, rate limiting and brute forcing. Kind of like what we saw here, brute forcing is a low severity, low severity, but in this instance, they considered it a high severity and awarded a bounty of $500. So it really depends on what program you're hunting on and the wording that they use for brute forcing and how they go about accepting it or denying it. But now what if we are hunting that allows brute forcing? How do we go about testing a web portal? Well, let's go ahead and jump into that right now. Now, if we don't know where the login web portal is located, we can brute force it by using derp, followed by the website and the dash w switch with the location of our word list. And by default, Kali stores the word list in USR share and then the word list directory followed by the word list you want to use. So once you find the login page that you want to brute force, go ahead and open the developer tools by pressing F12 because we're going to need to take note of information that needs to be sent over to Hydra for brute forcing. We need to take note what happens with an invalid attempt. 
Here you can see that it says invalid username. We need to take note of that this is a post method and we need to take note of the input fields, username and password. So let's go ahead and send this information over to Hydra. Hydra comes installed on Kali by default. So if you open a terminal type Hydra dash capital L followed by the file path location to the word list you want to use to brute force the username field followed by a dash P and here you can put in anything you want for the password because we just want the username right now. Then we're going to follow that up by the IP address or domain along with the HTTP post method and then lastly the full path to the login portal with the input fields username password and invalid username that we saw earlier in the developer tools this will brute force the login username until it finds a match that doesn't say invalid username now once you get a match in hydra you can see in my example that the login username found is administrator1 and our password currently is unknown. So now what we need to do is we're going to put in administrator1 in the username and we're going to brute force the password. Type Hydra into your terminal followed by a dash L with the username you found followed by a dash capital P to brute force the password field with the location of your password dictionary list followed by the IP address or domain along with the HTTP post method and then finally the path to the login form that you're going to brute force and this time we need to change invalid username that we saw previously in the developer tools to the new output invalid password which means we're telling Hydra to look for any combination that doesn't say invalid password. Now, if you had a successful attempt, you should see an output from Hydra with the username and password. If you made too many requests in a given time frame, it could be subject to rate limiting with a server response code of 429, which is too many requests. And the key here is to bypass the rate limiting algorithm typically by footprinting how many attempts you can make and by changing your IP address to rotate like we saw in the second write-up or by changing the HTTP request header to your local IP address. And if you're using Burp Suite, there'll be a link in the description to add this feature to bypass headers into your HTTP request. Now to see more, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any content because you guys really help keep this channel alive. Especially thank you to all the Patreons out there. I'll see you guys soon.